It is Tuesday, March 13th, and I'd like to call the Forsyth County Board of Education workshop meeting to order. Um, at this time, Kristen Morrissey will lead us in the invocation and pledge. Please bow your heads in a moment of silent reflection. Salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> You have before you, you an agenda. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion by Tom and second by Nancy. All in favor? Unanimous. We will have presentations at this point. Um, Carl Mercer is going to talk to us about alternative scheduling at West Forsyth High School. So before we get started, just a little appreciation yes. uh, to school board members for all that you do during this week. Thank of you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are these colors significant? Huh? Are the colors significant? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I, I'm not a board member. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I get one of those yeah. snazzy new shirts. Oh, yes, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, of course, thank you for all that you do every day uh, for us and the students of Forsyth County. So we appreciate that a little token of our appreciation from the West family. And then I, you also uh, received the edible arrangements from the West community, as thank again, you. as a token of what you guys do every day. So um, we're here to talk about a schedule for next year, alternative schedule for next year. And the, uh, the timeline kind of behind this is, this was in the works before I was named principal of uh, West Forsyth High School. And the idea was to create a schedule uh, that could be uh, better fit the population as far as uh, offering time for remediation, acceleration during the day every, every single day instead of just on Wednesdays during instructional focus. How could we take that time and do that every, every day? One of, the, one of the areas that we really wanted to focus on was being able to meet with students. Uh, if you'll remember in advance said, uh, one of our findings or recommendations was that we have uh, an environment where every student knows at least one adult. Uh, and we feel that this new schedule with what we'll have available during the day will help us help West Forsyth High School move in that way. Of course, everything that we do, we always look towards the learner profile um, as, as our focus um, when we're working towards that and we're working out the details. So with this new alternate schedule, um, under Pursue Continuous Learning, uh, we'll have time during the day to pursue passions. Students uh, will have time to pursue passions and interests. Individual study groups or sessions designed to meet their needs, remediation and enrichment opportunities. For example, there'll be time during the schedule for students to see teachers or peer tutors uh, to get help in certain areas that they may be falling behind in. Um, and also this time during the day allows them to use that time to get extra work done because it may be that they are caught up in a good place and they can just use it as a time to de-stress um, and kind of promote that social emotional growth. I know my daughter uh, has a full day every single day and is involved with band, involved with art, involved with drama, and involved with track and field. Uh, and so every little part of her day uh, is crucial. Uh, she tries to use that efficiently, and this will allow that extra time to get, get work done, extra work done during the day so that outside they can pursue their passions and interests. <coughs> Exhibit strong personal qualities, uh, opportunities to demonstrate responsibility and time management, time to decompress and de-stress during the day, balance for students' social emotional growth. And again, working on the idea that this time would give them, you know, that time to work, to time to de-stress, and also uh, create a time where they are responsible for how they use that time throughout the day. Um, and as you'll hear, there's other ideas about study groups, um, project-based learning, some things that they, that they can do as well. So as Mr. Mercer said, 
philosophically and logistically. This is really focused around the students' um, social and emotional health. And in going through the planning, and Mr. Woodley's going to talk to that in just a second, we tried to make sure that we thought of all the opportunities for student growth that would be available with the schedule. And in using the learner profile as a guide, um, Mr. Mercer did reference that we will have different remediation and enrichment and activities during this longer lunch, um, longer lunch period. But additionally, it does provide students the flexibility to use the time as they see fit. And there are some creative opportunities for them. Um, they will, we will have different opportunities for them within um, the counseling office. I've approached the counselors this year and said, you know, next year we need to look at starting some support groups because this is something that our children desperately need. And currently, there aren't different support groups. And students have expressed the need to do okay. so. So our counselors are very excited about some of the possibilities that they have moving forward next year. Additionally, this, like Mr. Rosser said, this is just time for the students. We are working on improving their interactions with one another. We have multiple programs <coughs> going on even currently working on their own self-worth and how they see themselves and how they interact with their peers. And so this is an opportunity for them to continue to do that. And we will have some structured programs throughout this flexible time to assist uh, students that are identified as such. This is going to be such a blessing for our graduation coach and for our ESOL and special ed um, teachers and department chairs because this program allows a very structured time for remediation and for MTSS. And at the high school level, that has always been something that has very much been a struggle. So we are looking forward to that structured time that we can get those identified kids in programs that will help with their academic success. Additionally, similar to IF, it does provide brief time for clubs and organizations to meet. Um, and it allows students to work together in groups. And Mr. Woodley is going to speak a little bit more on that. But this is the only time that the students will have to really just take a hold of what their day looks like and structure their day around projects. And as Mr. Mercer said earlier, when we started the early planning stages of this before he got on board, and then as we continued on when he came on board, we started you know, talking about what, what are the ways we can help our students in the school day with some fidelity with the IF program was fantastic. On Wednesdays, but only having it one day a week didn't provide them the opportunities each and every day for the academic support, the enrichment, the acceleration, or that area for that social emotional learning and the de-stressor in the day. So one of the things we created one of the reasons why is because of this. We created a schedule in mind with the students what they would meet their needs, but one of the things we did not want to lose out on was what was in it for the teachers. So we wanted to make sure it was a win-win for them. So as you see, uh, the schedule itself, we did not want to lose instructional time. The time that we have this year is maintained for each period. We still provided an hour for each child and teacher uh, for lunch each day. Teachers, however, will have um, a typical five-period caseload. They'll, they'll serve five periods a day as teachers. They'll have a, a lunch period as well and then two planning periods. So the benefit for teachers is that several days a week when they're not having a duty, not having an academic support group, not having an enrichment or a flex group or something like that, they will have several times a, a week where they have another free period. So they're gaining an extra hour a couple times a week and that's a win-win for them. They love that idea. I will tell you when talking to students as well because I did a lot of research and a lot of feed get feedback from parent groups and student <coughs> groups and teacher groups, but the students, when I share with them, hey guys, next year we're talking about creating this, and you're going to get an hour for lunch, and I started explaining the things they could do, and they said, Mr. Woodley, you, you had us an hour for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> so, I love that idea because it gives them that flex time they don't have now. Um, it's like their, their high school version of, of recess, so to speak, um, mm -hmm. maintained in a, in, a, in a tighter structure, so to speak, but it gives them an idea to be flexible and creative with their day, so to speak. So you see the lunch periods there providing a fourth, fifth, and sixth. They're, they're, for the most part, having 48 minutes each period for instructional time, so we don't lose any of that time we have this year as well. Um, one of the things we talked about and one of the, the um, very smart decisions that Carl came aboard and said is instead of having half of our school off for, for lunch at a time, we'll have three lunch periods. And can we create that? We did. We worked on it. And we're going to provide three lunch periods, so now we have only a third off at a time so we can maintain the structure, so to speak, with students d during the school day. And the areas that we're going to sort of house them and contain them, because we have to have structured time for them as well in their, in their so-called freedom, is we're going to do the same kind of things we're doing this year. And you know, we're going to have students, most of them eating in the, in the, the cafe like we do now, 
We'll have other areas that we will um, provide them opportunities. And you see in the second map here, we'll have students upstairs where the media center is, housed in the media center or in the front of the media center, um, not walking down the hallways and, and, and inter interrupting instruction at the time. And they're really doing that now where we have students today. But one of the things that we've been trying to do is create the media center as one of the hubs of the school. And this will provide that. They'll get to go in there and have areas for study, areas for testing, remediation and makeup, um, areas for acceleration and enrichment, areas to hang out and do study groups. And, and uh, one of the things that we will utilize there is the space that we have there. They're already using it now for lunch. They're doing it in the front of the hallway. They're doing it in the lunchroom now. So really, we're not creating any new places for them. They're already doing that. They're already trained now to do that as well. So, so just in conclusion, right now, we're kind of working through a lot of the details. Uh, both Ms. Bradley and Mr. Woodley have done a great job of getting gathering input from the teachers. Uh, we had um, teachers assigned to gather input from their department, kind of the non-negotiables. How would you structure this time if you have that? And we're using that as we build kind of the, the criteria and the nuts and bolts of this, uh, of this time. So um, we, we will also work on seating uh, and what that looks like and the idea with having the three lunches and, and instead of having 1400 kids off at one time you have about 850 and mm -hmm. right now um, our uh, cafeteria holds right around 700 and then we have the hallway in, in the media center and, and like Mr. Woodley alluded to we are actually doing that right now and the kids so this will be a natural um, uh, move for the students uh, with the exception that they'll get a little bit uh, a little bit more time mm -hmm. so um, so as we finish out this year, we'll be working on kind of the nuts and bolts. How's it going to, how is everything going to work as far as the remediation time and um, get focused on gathering information uh, to present out? Well, we, uh, I've talked with our LSC or PTO. I've also, I have a group of student advisors that I've talked with and um, we've heard uh, positive feedback um, from, <coughs> from every group that we've talked with. So we're excited about this possibility for next year. What about science teachers? What do they think about it? Because an hour or less than an hour, can they do experiments and things by the time you get a class in there, organize them? And so a lot of, um, a lot of uh, labs, um, they're doing online. For um, Anyway, there's a lot of labs that they're doing online. We, we actually, when we surveyed the teachers uh, last year, uh, almost 90% preferred to go with the straight eight. Because if you go with, um, uh, for example, like Lambert's Lunch and Learn, they still have two periods a day that are 45 minutes, so you still have to plan for that anyway uh, because of the, the way that it works. Um, we started off the year talking about moving this way and having conversations about, okay, if I have a lesson that lasts uh, 90 minutes, where do I take that and break that so that I can pick that up? the next day and so we've been working towards that this year and just looking at those and, and trying to document how, how we can make how we make this work most of the feedback um, for those that uh, were not in favor of the straight eight we did have conversations with and by the way we've that they they have almost all come around and they agree with having especially when they knew that they were going to have to have two different plans anyway if we went with still went with the with the block um, a lot of it had to do with just testing. They just wanted that extra time for the testing. Well, we, you know, it's, it's my belief that we can break a test up. We can have two different portions, and we can give multiple portions over a couple of days, and allows that, you know, and that allows for mm -hmm. you can have your multiple choice, and then you have a construction response in the extended part one day. So, might like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just like the fact that you're. The emotional and social learning part that we've talked about for the last couple of years now is just another opportunity to reinforce that. And I like the fact that the clubs are going to have opportunities to meet during school time as well. Uh, the high school I went to um, 100 years ago, we actually did that because most of us were bused in. And we had, I think every Thursday, that early first hour was club meeting time. So I think you get more at more people involved who don't have to do after school, who can't stay after school. And I love the fact that it's, it's a time for mentors, for teachers to get to that, as you say, every adult has a child that, that they're following through the school. I think that's going to open a lot of doors that we haven't seen before. 
So I'm excited. I think it's great. Came back from a Tampa trip, and we had one of the high schools we had visited had one lunch, and I said, "Hey, let's do do one lunch." Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we stayed with this. <laughs> we stayed with three. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. It was great. Does so anybody else? Make your report or something. See how it goes. Yeah. We Say definitely will. will. Well, you know, much like we, when uh, Dr. Davison presented to the board a couple of years ago with Lunch and Learn, uh, again, it's not something that the board has to approve, but I wanted to make sure that you understood the rationale behind it mm -hmm. uh, as West is moving forward, because it is going to be different than our other high schools uh, going away from having the modified mm -hmm. block uh, mm -hmm. as we do now. And I'm sure the other high schools will be very paying very close attention to how see this how works. works. And mm -hmm. See about uh, if, if they might want to take a similar approach in the future. I know you guys visited Lambert's Lunch mm -hmm. and Learn. Took some ideas from that as you incorporated your own plan. Yes, sir. As our other high school principals have as well. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I just wanted you to hear it and make sure you know what's going on. And I think you brought up forward. a good point about the social emotional. I remember, I think you were at the meeting when we were at Lambert when Gary was doing a follow up. Yeah on the lunch and learn and one of the students came in and she had been new to the system and she didn't know anybody and so she was kind of sat alone in the hall by herself and that lunch and learn environment made it stick out like a sore thumb that she didn't have a friend or a social group mm -hmm. so a teacher or another student approached her and she had been shy she got into a club and then the next thing you know she was speaking in front of all these principals with much confidence so I think you're right mm -hmm. just a different environment mm -hmm. you know help bring someone out that might not have otherwise mm -hmm. so. One of the other very positive unintended consequences from Lambert was students advocating for themselves during that time period. Mm -hmm. The counselors were telling me that they were hearing less from parents because students were, again, taking care of that stuff on their own because they had time to do it mm -hmm. during that lunch period. And that's the one thing I like about this, <coughs> students having that additional time will be able to take care of some things during the school day that Typically, they wouldn't have time to do now. I really charged our um, new graduation coach for next year to create the model MTSS program and what mm -hmm. that looks like. And so we're doing a, she's doing a lot of research right now on what that looks like and what we need to incorporate and how that can take, you know, we can do that during these uh, three lunch periods. Yeah. So what is that? model what uh, MTSS which is multi-tiered student support uh, okay. in a system of support student support either way it sounds great right it um, <laughs> it's basically RTI um, interventions uh, okay. the levels that the students are at and what, what we need to do to, uh, to help them Good. instruction and behavior both Good. instruction and behavior we just we're like at Lambert he found that the kids that were they're catching the kids that are potentially going to fail, of yes. course, sooner, so they're catching before mm -hmm. the end of the semester and then getting up to speed, mm -hmm. so he found that right. the pass rate had significantly changed since, since they started lunch. Because again, mm -hmm. teacher, I mean, students are using this time to go find those Good content specialists mm -hmm. that can help them in areas mm -hmm. where they need remediation. And some will be um, planned. Uh, yeah. Like there, there will right. be some students that mm -hmm. fall behind that will have to after they get That's their lunch they will have right. to report, right? right. Um, right. So right. that we um, can make sure they're up to up to speed. Not freedom, right. but also structure. Mm -hmm. um, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, with freedom comes responsibility, <laughs> and you know they're high school students, and I, you know I applaud you for uh, allowing them to have that opportunity to be responsible and accountable for their own work. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, interesting how we have gone yeah. full circle from totally block to partial block and now you're stepping another step forward with mm -hmm. no block mm -hmm. and it's what it used to be years ago mm -hmm. so it's interesting mm -hmm. that we're used to be but 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 a different structure exactly. of the way you're doing lunch right. I mean that mm -hmm. this is that that is much different than years ago where everything was straight 45 right. minutes and right. 20 minutes for lunch and you may have had a study hall or something mm -hmm. like that so that's right exciting good luck yeah, it is. thank you thank, thank you, you so great. Much. Okay. have a great day <coughs> All right, next we have a legislative position suggestions. Does anybody have anything they'd like to present to GSBA? <coughs> Nothing? Okay. They spent yeah. a lot of time on that. Yeah, yes. and I think once you did, redid it a few years ago, you were yeah. on GSBA, I think they really did a good job at that point. Very thorough. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, it, the things that usually come up when I go to the meetings are, are most more local issues right. rather than statewide issues, mm -hmm. so most of them don't get approved. The next is construction update with Tom Winning. And our beautiful schools that tour this morning. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, that academy is just outstanding.
Good afternoon. Um, so starting with Alliance, uh, we're appreciative of you taking the time and the board taking the time to tour this morning. Uh, we hope you had fun. Um, so looking at Alliance, the timing of your tour was great. Uh, we're pleased to report we do now have the certificate of occupancy. Uh, that's not only really critical for Alliance, but also where we are with FF&E information technology and, and Denmark. And by that I mean really the next stages added Alliance is uh, security cameras, uh, intrusion alarms will take place the next two to three weeks. Uh, from there, FF&E furniture will be moved in. That'll give us the appropriate time, given uh, CTAE having such a significant role in the specialized equipment, uh, gives us time to move that equipment in. Uh, and then lastly, we'll be moving in information technology. Uh, so in general, um, all of those sequences are such that Denmark will finish about four to six weeks from now. Um, so we'll cycle those activities being complete right from Alliance and roll them right over to Denmark. Um, so that helps. Um, you know, we think the other critical component of the delivery of Alliance is um, really great quality, and we hope you enjoyed and, and appreciated the quality um, that went into Alliance today uh, during your tour. And lastly, we're thrilled to report uh, financially, uh, if you recall, the original contract was $28.9 million. Um, and in general, on a project like this that's not a prototype, um, given the development, design, construction, contingency risk, we really look at a percentage rule of thumb in the industry of about 2.5%, mm -hmm. um, which would then correlate the $28.9 million number to 29.6. Uh, and I'm thrilled to share with you that job now is trending at about $28.6 million. So we're coming in with a $300,000 credit, um, and that's due primarily to some value engineering, um, executing the geotechnical risk that we thought we had on that job moving it forward, and really an excellent set of design documents. And um, given those three pillars of delivery, scheduled budget quality, that are just so critical in development, um, normally we don't single out names, but I think in, in this case it really warrants it. Um, in the tour today and the fun we had, and just kind of looking back of where we were two and a half years ago, I uh, really got to commend the vision of the board uh, and all those stakeholders that were partners with us just two and a half years ago, um, culminating in our, in our walk today. Um, so from the board uh, going through uh, development and planning with Bill and Tim and really just everything needed to happen exactly perfectly to, to get this done in time. Um, moving to design Manly Spangler Smith, not only the quality that you saw, but kind of the innovation that you saw in the design. And it's not just an institutional look, it's got a nice kind of fun look to it. Um, state of the art uh, introduced. Um, and then from a construction perspective, Carol Daniel to bring it in um, under budget, the great quality that you saw uh, and ahead of schedule. Uh, is to be commended, along with Al Senna, um, who kind of behind the scenes, our project manager, uh, I think did a great job protecting the school's interests. So normally we don't do that, but to have the culmination of all those things just happen um, perfectly um, doesn't happen too often. And, and lots of times in our nasty business, it's not a fun visit to take the board through after it's late and over budget and with quality problems. So today was a little bit of fun. Thank you. That, that um, visit today was very telling the people that are not in the school system could actually see the quality work that is done. Uh, two of the commissioners want to know if they can come to Denmark now next week and see <laughs> what's going on. Okay, well, we'll show you. Yeah, Denmark's yeah, a little yeah. further behind, but we'll. Yeah, we'll I think we'll get that Alliance will be looked at as the community school because of, of all the governmental agencies that had a piece mm -hmm. that yeah, in making yeah, it happen. Right. So it truly was a gathering point for all leaders and their. It was good to show what we can do. Mm -hmm. so I wouldn't you say it came in under budget, and that's exceptionally good because during the time this was constructed, given the uptick in the economy, wouldn't you say the construction costs overall have, have oh, risen yeah, during so that? Yeah, time? yeah, really fortunate. So I mean, we, we talked about that today with the design team. Over the last three months, they've seen an 8% increase in pricing. So, oh, so um, the timing uh, was great for mm -hmm. us, and uh, just all the way around, it was a. We're, v we're very fortunate. So, um, so you've seen this, but uh, this is the uh, gymnasium side. Uh, this is the back side. So a, a great first level view of the media center overlooking the, the view and uh, the two-story cafeteria that we had lunch in. 
Um, that is the cafeteria, uh, media center, uh, marketing lab, uh, kitchen, uh, courtroom, which is low, is a little different, a little fun. So um, just normal hallway. So we're, we're thrilled with um, Alliance. Uh, and then moving forward to where we are at Denmark, um, the first thing I would note is this photo is February 17th. Um, so a lot of work has been done between now and when you tour next Tuesday. Um, so when you tour next Tuesday, um, just given reasonable weather, uh, we anticipate paving will be substantially complete. Um, coincidentally, the, the intergovernmental agreement field that you see um, in the upper left-hand corner, fortunately we received um, Forsyth County <coughs> Parks and Rec um, 495,000 reimbursement uh, as we do have the CFO for all the fields uh, and the outbuilding so that's just a great synergistic relationship and uh, again we'll be ready for May 1st football to get the school sport started out of Denmark. Um, for the most part um, we're substantially complete with the huge exception of if you remember our ad alternate which is our C wing which is in the upper left hand corner. Uh, that's where we've got really 200 men concentrated working, uh, and you'll see that uh, when we walk next Tuesday. But again, uh, this is an old photo just in the cycle of where the board meetings hit with the aerial views that we fly over with the helicopters. Uh, so for the most part, the mud you see is now sodded, um, and the vast majority of paving is 90% um, done with the remaining 10% done. Uh, to be done uh, during the next uh, 10 days. Um, that is the rear view uh, of the facility. Um, Performing Arts Center, so some beautiful. interior it's shots. That's a little so different really um, than what we've done in the past. That's exciting. Uh, media Center, uh, similar to, to what you saw out of Alliance, a little more state-of-the-art design and kind of Starbucks feel to it. Um, the gymnasium now, um, all of the bleachers are in place. That's a, a little bit of an older photo uh, that you see, uh, but the gymnasium is now complete, the competition gym. Um, the food court uh, is coming together. Some flooring is down now. That's a little bit of an older picture, um, but again, an updated more. Pardon? Tile work is beautiful. Yeah, yeah, that's a little different. Similar to North, what you saw, if you remember, North High School. Uh, kitchen health, health department inspection uh, is going to be taking place Monday, um, so we have things like the elevator, health department, uh, preliminary uh, fire department inspections will be taking place in late March, so uh, we anticipate CFO, because this is a little bit more of a complicated building at 450,000 square feet, uh, anywhere between April 15th and April 30th, uh, and that fits exactly in line with what we need to do with FF&E information technology um, to move the cycle through. Um, just another shot of the band room, and um, that's an overview of uh, both Alliance and Denmark. Yay. Okay. Questions? Yeah. Looks good. 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 Any questions or anything? Mm -hmm. Thanks, At least we're not getting snowstorms like they're up north. Oh, <laughs> <I know. laughs> yeah. Thank you. Despite Thank the rain, you. it's all good. Uh, any suggestions for future agenda items? No. All Before right. we go into executive session, if you don't mind, uh, Ann, uh, just a quick update. Uh, we're starting to attend uh, LSC meetings. I'm sure you are too, and mm -hmm. uh, around the bond, and, and a lot of questions. Probably the number one question I've received, received if I, I've attended several of these, is you know people wanting to know what's going on. Uh, with a joint task force that we formed in terms of security and just wanted to say publicly I know you know this uh, as we look at our bond proposal right now we have two, two million dollars earmarked for security um, this board and this community has invested millions of dollars in school security in years past truly have state-of-the-art surveillance equipment uh, in Todd's office uh, however uh, as we're going through the schools and doing this audit, one of the things I'm telling everyone we meet with who asks this question, that if we need to make an adjustment to our bond and increase the amount of dollars for security, 
uh, we're going to do so. Uh, safety and security of our staff and students will be the number one priority of this bond. And so if we have to add additional dollars there, now we can look at the project list and see what we can put on hold for a period of time. But I want to make sure that everyone understands, and the reason I'm saying this is because I'm getting asked this right. on a very consistent basis is, yes, the number one priority for the bond will be safety and security. Uh, we don't, we're not sure exactly uh, what the final report will be. That work has started in earnest. Uh, we will get that final report uh, sometime in April, which will give us time to update the bond with what we're going to need before the vote in May. So I just share that with you as you go out, people ask, mm -hmm. just want to make sure we're given a very consistent answer is, yes, we're doing the audit, we'll see what the results are. If we need to add additional dollars for safety and security, which I anticipate we will, we will do so, and it will be included in the bond. Okay. So any questions or comments around that? I think that's a continuation that's of what we've already done. In the right. last bond, we had even more in there for right. security. And after this bond and in the future, we'll have audits again and again. It's not a, we're never done with security. Just right. like anything in IT always has to be upgraded, right. so it's a never ending. That, that's a great point because I think because a lot of people really don't even know what we have for security. Yes. Okay. But because of what happened on February 14th, we're getting a lot of questions. And, and, and Todd has entertained, I don't know how many parent groups at uh, school safety just mm -hmm. to show them. And I think most people leave feeling very good about the investment that we've made. Because again, we've invested millions, mm -hmm. not only in surveillance equipment, but in, in, in the entry of our schools, mm -hmm. uh, the, the uh, safety buttons that all our receptionists have. Mm -hmm. if, if we need a response, uh, we get it immediately. Uh, all of our communications is, is up to date. Um, but again, it's important that we do an audit. And if we have to add more, mm -hmm. we will. And on top of that is that strong partnership we have with the Sheriff's Department as well. That's Absolutely. Like and, and, the, and the final thing I'll say, and I've said this everywhere I go, but I think it's worth repeating. The number one thing we can do for safety and security is continue our See Something, Say Something campaign, and it doesn't cost a dime. And our students, Todd will tell you, now more than ever, are reporting to us when they see something on social media that's not quite right. And we appreciate that because it gives us an opportunity to investigate every single one of those. And again, between Todd's department and the Sheriff's department, we are investigating all of them. But our students are communicating now with us m more than ever, and we want them to continue to do so. This is a partnership. If we're all going to maintain the very high level of safety that we all want, then the students and adults have to work together. They're on social media far more than we are, mm -hmm. and, and they see those things, and they need to continue to communicate, mm -hmm. and fortunately, they are. That's good. That's good. That's good. All right. At this time, I uh, entertain a motion to go to executive session for personnel and student educational records. So moved. Second. Motion by Tom and a second by Nancy. All in favor? Unanimous. <coughs> 